So if we're going to treat cheeks, so something I find really useful is to think about the surfaces of the zygoma and the direction in which they face. So if you project outwards from any surface, you're going to get a different result. So if you look at the cheek here, this is a male cheek, which is often a bit strong, but it's relatively smaller compared to the rest of the face. There's a slight upward tilt on the superior aspect of the zygoma. There's an anterior facing element. So if you inject here, you're going to project the cheek anteriorly. Whereas just a centimeter lateral, you're now injecting out, you're now projecting in this direction. If you're slightly higher, you get a slight wood upward projection. And I've started, particularly in females, trying to get onto this upper surface so that I get more of an upward projection. And we just need to Whenever you think about how to inject, think about where the surface of the bone is. And if you feel along the bone, you can actually feel it quite easily, I think. You get a feeling for, over time, which direction that bone is facing. But obviously you can check before you inject as well. So you can feel the direction of her zygoma very easily, which is worth, worth doing. And then you can feel the angle of it. There's, a, there's definitely a shift in angle that's very easy to mm -hmm. find. The main thing I want from an aesthetic perspective is to know where the angle of the cheek is and which direction I want to change it. Do I want to project outwards, um, in between, or frontally, anteriorly? And so that's the first thing I do is just feel, is feel. And I get an idea with my fingers where the anterior and the lateral surfaces are. Um, and then I feel for the corner in between those two. And that's running parallel with her lateral canthus. You can then use one of the other markings that's quite useful is to draw a line from the root of the helix to the ala base. Mm -hmm. The only problem with this is you can draw a straight line in multiple ways because it's a curved surface and you can miss that point. But if you want to create the beauty point, you're looking for that junction of actually three surfaces. So you can feel an upward tilt, a frontal tilt, inferior and lateral, superior and lateral. And I, and I want it to be basically on that point that I can make out. But you can validate that with this drawing along here. If you struggle with it at the beginning, it's actually quite useful to draw yeah. with the string or with anything that's straight, just lay it out, and that'll be a good place to start. So I'm, when I go in at this point, I want to be more on the lateral side of it. So I'm going to be feeling for the sense that the bone is pointing, facing me in this direction. And then that's where I'll do my first injection. Mm -hmm. I think we'll then need another one about a centimeter away. There's usually where the facial ligaments attach, you get a weak spot on the skin. It's quite a good place to put an yeah, injection. Yeah. And then once you get back over here, it's it's kind of, there's less and less certainty about what happens with this product. I've seen some studies saying it all just spreads above and below, but certainly up to this point here, typically there's another weak point there. Yeah. You can you can create that rounder shape. Now remember that the goal I've got in my head is, is this cheek should form a round shape like this. Mm -hmm. It's like a teardrop. And I want, or a spoon where the deepest part of the spoon is that area of greatest definition, and then it fades away. Yeah. And if you just do those injections, you can end up with an empty spoon here and that creates too much definition. So quite often you need a little, a little bit of volume there as well. But I, I usually make that decision as I'm treating. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can predict it sometimes, but that's quite a good standard approach. If you could look up with your eyes as well, let's see what lateral to cheek junction looks like. So the junction here between the cheek and the eyelid is also an area that is sometimes nice to improve. So you can do an injection just here on the periosteum as well. So I'm also feeling that here's the eyeball, there's the orbit, orbital rim, mm -hmm. and I'm right on the bone, it's upper cheek, it's not an eye injection. But that is a very restorative injection because a lateral cheek junction, you basically don't seem to get that as often in younger people as you do tear trough. Tear trough is quite common, mm -hmm. even in kids, whereas this, makes you look tired or sad yeah, yeah. and it comes later on. It's only tiny. So that might be what I'd expect to work with later. So I'm not, I'm not currently doing a lot anteriorly. If I was, and I might do this once I've done it, it would be feeling for that anterior surface again and little injection just here, but I would enter at a very different angle. I wouldn't be going like that, mm -hmm. be going like that. In terms of blood, blood vessels, you're, it's actually a relatively safe area. As areas go, if you're gonna be on the bone, there are not that many vessels to worry about. But we do have the transverse facial that, like a lot of blood vessels, likes to run where it is safer. So it's more underneath the bone. So it probably runs typically under the zygoma and then curls up a little bit the front. 
There's the zygomatic or facial artery, which sometimes about a third of people have a little foramen with a tiny little artery that comes out of it, but only 70% of people don't have one. But you might think about that at a quick feel to see if you feel it. There is a little indentation, which is why I asked. It's like a flat spot, maybe associated. Very small vessel, thankfully. So transverse facial, zygomatic or facial. There's a zygomatic or orbital branch, which is a bit like, you think of it like the superficial temple artery, but it comes down much lower and then curls up the orbit. Mm -hmm. But it's similar to that vessel. It re often replaces the superficial temple artery. They won't have a temple artery, but they'll have a, a vessel here. I've seen one, found one that run, ran right in the eyebrow before we were putting a cannula in. So feeling for it, you could feel it pulsating away. Uh, then we have more medially your infraorbital artery. Mm -hmm. So this, this comes up from branching off from the maxillary artery. It runs on the floor of the orbit and then the maxillary artery, to cut things short, supplies the midface, nasopharynx and palate. And so if you include that, you get very internal type issues. But this vessel will be, you can feel the frame in here, it's about there and they'll be throwing vessels in that direction. So you can see now when she smiles, the greatest bulk of her cheek is here. Yeah. And it's relatively on the lower side. And then mm -hmm. here is much more bony and empty. Yeah. So this fits quite nicely with my injection pattern. Mm -hmm. They're mainly superior, probably I may not even do that one. It should, it should res basically be restorative and slightly beautifying on that spectrum rather than augmenting. So lateral cheek junction is better on that side. That looks fuller. Slight difference to the cheeks, big smile again. Yeah, this might be a slightly fuller side. Would you inject different amounts on different sides? If you felt like one side was more, had more volume? Sometimes, but usually not. So if you have something that's, the analogy is a vodka and coke. Mm -hmm. If you have a single vodka and coke and a double vodka and coke, they actually look the same. Right, yeah. If you imagine them really, and it's because, so it's because the relative difference is small. So if you then put a shot into each one, so now you have a double and a triple, they, the difference between the two is the actually less. Now, yeah, yeah. So the relative difference. So you can do the same treatment and decrease asymmetry. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit easier than trying to vary. Yeah, yeah. I think I've got 0.6 here, 0. Yeah, and trying to do that. <laughs>